Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this last little video on propositions, I'm just going to go over some of our basic laws of logic. Now logic follows laws very similar to our algebra follows laws, right? In algebra we know that we have commutative, associative, and distributive laws, and logic also has these laws in a certain sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and write them out for you, and we'll go over what they mean and why. So commutative Right? That means that elements can commute. Right? Usually this means that um, in algebra, commutative means in multiplication, right? A, B equals B, A. Right? It means they can commute. They can kind of switch places with each other, and they still have an equivalent meaning or an equivalent uh, result. So our commutative laws in logic follow this idea. If I have P or Q, that's an equivalent statement to Q or P, right? This is pretty intuitive. This uh, should make sense. Um, and similarly, I have P and Q. This is an equivalent statement to Q and P, right? It doesn't matter what order I talk about these propositions in. If I'm talking about one or the other, or I'm talking about both, they're taken more as a collective, right? The, the order in which we write them uh, doesn't change the meaning of, of this connective. Now we also have our associative laws. Now these associative laws, um, they only apply when I'm using the same connective. Okay, so f for example, if I have P or, and then in parentheses, I have this Q or R. That's going to be equivalent to the statement P or Q or R. And for my commutative, I could even say R or P or Q, right? I can mix these all around, basically, is what I'm saying. And in fact, commonly, we'll, in this case, we'll just omit parentheses, and this is just P or Q or R. The order doesn't matter, right? And kind of the same thing with commutative. I'm really saying here P or Q or R. Here in this first one, this parentheses means I'm looking at Q or R or P. Here I'm looking at is P or Q, is this statement true? or is the statement R true? And really what I'm looking at in all of these cases is are one of these true, right? If one of these are true, then these then this is going to be have the same truth table, right? If we made a truth table of all three of these things, they'd all be exactly the same. These are equivalent statements. Now we also have um, this with our and as well, P and Q and R. This is equivalent to P and Q and R, which in turn, again, is just equivalent to P and Q and R, right? I'm using the same connective here, and all that I'm really saying in all three of these equivalent statements is, are they all true, right? Any of these statements are going to be true if every single one of P, Q, and R as independent propositions are true on their own, and it's going to be false if a single one of them is false. Right? Of course, if there's more than one, it's still going to be false, but all that I require for these statements to be false is that a single one of these simple propositions, P, Q, and R, are false. Right? So these first two laws, commutative and associative, they make a lot of sense, but it's good to see them so that we know what it is that we're able to do. Now, notice that so far, I've been using only the same kind of connectives. Now, when we have these mixed statements with mixed connectives, we can't associate like this. It doesn't quite work this way, but we can use what's called our distributive laws. Right? And what our distributive laws say, if I have something like P or Q and R, right? I can't reassociate, right? This is not equivalent this is not equivalent to P or Q and R, right? I cannot do that. That's not the same thing. Okay, so in general, we can't reassociate like this. And I'll leave it to you to find uh, an example of why. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit. What I can do is I can use my distributive laws, okay? Now, what my distributive laws say, that this is going to be equivalent to, and you can think of this as, well, let me write it out first. This is going to be equivalent to P or Q and P or R. 
right? Now this is very similar to my distributive laws in basic arithmetic, right? If this was p times q plus r, that would be the same thing as p times q plus p times r, right? So not the exact same thing happening here, but um, it's a distributive law. That's what we call a distributive law, and, and we can kind of see that here. Now why is this true? Well, on this left-hand side, this is going to be true if p is true, or if both q and r are true, okay? And otherwise it'll be false. On this right-hand side, this is going to be true if p is true, right? If I say p is true, then this whole statement's true, and this whole statement's true, so this whole statement's true. And if q and r are true, then this whole statement's true, this whole statement's true, which means that this whole statement is true, okay? So these are equivalent statements. They have the exact same truth table. Now, there's nothing special about this order of or and and, right? We have three other distributive laws. Um, this is a left-hand side, but I also have, let's say I have p and q in the parentheses or r on the right. I can still distribute on the, you know, from the right-hand side. This is the same as p or r and q or r, right? I'm distributing what's on the outside into the parentheses in that way. And then I also have, of course, I can switch the roles of AND and OR here. If I have P AND Q OR R, that's going to be equivalent to P AND Q or uh, P AND R. And then finally I have, if I have P OR Q AND R, <laughs> almost started writing and there, and r, that's going to be equivalent to p, oh, p and r, or q and r, okay? So these are our distributive laws, right? And um, you can verify any of these on a truth table, right? That's a good exercise to try try making a truth table, you're going to have eight rows in this truth table, right, because you have three simple propositions. And you'll get that all of these are going to be equivalent. They're all going to have the same values on the truth table when you put it to the test. Now I have one more um, law, and I don't have any space here, so I'm going to go ahead and get a new board. And this is called De Morgan's Laws. De Morgan's. Right? And I have two of these laws, and these laws involve the negation, right? So if I have negation of the statement P or Q, this is equivalent to the negation of P and the negation of Q, right? So let's think about this for a second. Inside of these parentheses here, P or Q, this is true if P is true, or if Q is true, or if both are true. Now the negation of that um, is going to be true exactly when the statement inside is false. So this statement inside is false only when both P and Q are false, right? So this whole side is true only when P is false and Q is false. And that's exactly what I've written on the right here, isn't it? P is false and Q is false. Now we also can do this with our and. The negation of P and Q is equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. So you can usually think of this as the negation sign is um, making both of these negatives, but it's changing my connective, right? It's going from OR to AND and from AND to OR. And again, the rationalization, the logic here behind this, why these are equivalent is the same. This statement on the inside of the parentheses is only true when both P and Q are true. So it's false, or in other words, the negation is true if P is false or if Q is false. Or in other words, when not P is true or when not Q is true. Okay. Now these are all laws you can become familiar with, um, and that ends our proposition section. Again, I'm 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 using these last three videos I've made as a lead into two different sections. So you might notice repetition if you're watching everything all the way through, because uh, these smoothly lead into both <laughs> methods of proof and logic-based proofs, and it also leads into our set theory. Because we're going to be using some truth tables in our set theory. Um, as a method of proving something, some things in set theory. Okay, we'll see you in the next video, whichever uh, whichever area it is that you're watching this in.